Trevor's in um, I've known them all my life. Not mm. recall ever meeting them. As far as I was concerned, they were my brothers. Mm. I had a brother who was living in Jamaica at the time. And um, um, never met him till he came to England when he was about 14. I would have been about nine. Mm. So um, Trevor and Glenn Prince were my brothers. Mm. Um, I remember being at school one day, just started um, Tyndall Street Junior School. And this little boy came up to me and he said, you got brother? <laughs> I said, no, I've got no brother. Him start fighting me. <laughs> and he stopped. So when I caught out what was going on, we just start chasing him, I chase him, I chase him. I want to give him what for? <laughs> but I couldn't because he stood between his two brothers. Yeah. And when I look up, there was like two tree chunk. <laughs> and so I was mad and yeah. I was crying. Mm. So I walked away and I saw Glenn. So Glenn came to me and said, what you crying for, what you crying for? I said, I'm the way I did it. I'm about to be my brother and all these kind of things before. I know you stop fighting. He said, stop it. And he said, if them ever ask, it was a trick at the time. That's what they used to do. If you had no family, they'd, yeah, they'd fight, fight you. Yeah, yeah. So he said, tell him. Is it a white boy or a black boy? White boy. Okay. So he said, um, tell him, say, yeah, brother here, Trevor and Glenn. I'm from that. So my mum used to babysit them. Um, when they were young boys, so as far as I was concerned, Trevor and Glenn we were brothers. my brothers. I learned a lot from Trevor. I mean, he was a great friend and his sound, everybody's, the classic Trevor, Cor Trevor Prince chorus sound, it's nobody else had that sound. Um, he was the first guy I remember that brought the chorus peddling. And he's like, why does his guitar sound like that? It's like, everybody's looking and seeing what's Trevor got on the floor there. Pedals, man. Pedals. Trevor had his pedals. He had his sound together, um, and that's where we learn. You know, he and he was a giving guy. He always used to sit down, talk about how you set up your guitar, what sounds you get, how you set up your amps, what sounds you get from this. Great guy to talk to, and um, a great influence as well. Like Trevor, while well, I grew up with Trevor, my brother, mm. and we learned together. Mm. If Trevor learned a new lick. He'd go, listen to this, listen to this, mm. you know, and I'd do the bass line to it, and, and that's how we done. Mm. We was in church playing. We didn't even have to look at each other. Mm. I, occasionally I'd glance over and I'd see a smile and he was all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know I'm doing all right, you know what I mean? And we, 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 we think along the same way. I was in the car, he left me in his car. I think he had a, a Cortina um, Mark III, Mark II or Mark III back then. And I was just, he left some music and I was just playing on the headrest. And he's come in the car and um, he said, what are you doing? And I, and I stopped and I froze. He said, he said what was you doing? And I said, oh, I was just playing, just tapping the headrest. He said, was yeah, do it again. So I did it again. <sighs> Sorry, Watch. Sorry. Do you know what he did? So, uh, yeah, do you yeah, know what yeah. he did? Yeah. He bought some Congos and he asked me to play at his concert. In 1979, um, was eight. And there's a picture, there's a picture yeah. of me playing. Yeah. And um, that was my first ever performance. And that was because of Trevor. Trevor was not over complex. He would just play what was needed. Darren just played what was needed. And I just weaved in between. And he made me feel like a million dollars. When I was playing bass, um, if Darren wasn't there, I'd play bass. And uh, I remember Tre Trevor saying to me, turn up your bass, turn up your bass. I'm going, I can't turn it up, I can't turn it up, I'm going to get in trouble, turn up your bass. He, he, was just, he, just, he just knew what he needed to hear. Great guy, he had to have a mic in front of his amplifier and that was it. You know, God rest his soul, Trevor was just truly amazing. So yes, three really great was. influences for me, Trevor Prince, definitely. Um, Ozzy Ozzy Williams, Williams, still in America now and my childhood best friend Wayne Williams who oh. started me on this musical journey and right. love for music and still right. now. With Trevor Prince, he brought me into Hazel Watson's band um, and I cannot um, not mention her as one of the influences. She had a voice like Silk and um, she's a great loss. She would have, you know, she would have been somebody in gospel now if she'd, you know, she'd still been with us. The greatest singer for me, Hazel Watson. Again, rest in peace. This girl had such a voice, but it weren't just a voice, it was a character. Not just a character, it was a knowledge of music. She's the same age as me, so by the time I was cutting it at 15 to 17, she was already cutting it. 
Her voice was amazing. Best singer, best influential person I know. I can't think of anyone. Hazel Watson, rest in peace. Hazel um, was another singer that I thought had something. Um, and again, I, I don't like to say this, but at the time before she died, I remember saying to Hazel, you need to record, you need to record, you need to record. Um, breaks my heart to say, but I was on a case to record um, because I said to her, you've got a voice that needs to be captured. Um, and we were good friends. Like Hazel, me and Hazel used to run all the time, but I always used to say to Hazel, record something, please record something. You need to record. Playing for Hazel was great. She did. Um, she did a number of things like Jamboree and a few things and was just kind of, just beginning to get out there. We did a demo, we started a demo in what was a studio down Newtown, I forgot. Oh, I can't remember the name. And I've got pictures from that day, because one thing I myself like to know, I always like to take pictures. You know, my friends would tease me and say, what, you know, haven't you got a memory? No, it's because I like to capture a memory. So I can now go back and look at pictures of, you know, Vindel, Paul Reed, myself, um, Hazel, when we were doing this demo in the studio. And even though my sister's gone, I have that memory. And Paul's gone, God bless him, we've got that memory. And you look back and you think, yeah, a moment in time. Hazel was such a, a, a joyful, happy, bubbly she person. Yeah. She could, you think we can laugh? She oh could God, laugh, I'm telling to laugh, you. Mate. Such presence. She did, she, she did. But she when it came to presence, her ministry, man. she was serious. Yes. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <clears throat> definitely there was don't, no playing. Don't mess with Absolutely her when no it comes playing. to... <laughs> the ministry. No nah. playing at all. Fantastic. Nah. Frankie was the one. Anything you wanted to to know or people you wanted to meet. He interviewed some he Frank had his show, the Frank Stewart Gospel Show, and he had some really interesting people on on he interviewed some very interesting people and he would get the most off the chart people to interview and he always got them. They would always yeah, for you, I'll do it. Mansfield Royal Choir was always there, doing their own thing. Um, Sharon was, when I was around them, was choir director. Um, and she wasn't, she wasn't really into choir wars. She would do her own thing. She said, no, we're not running no competition with nobody. We're just going to come and do it. And I have to say, Mansfield Royal were slick. They had a slick style. And then the advantage they had is the musicians, because the majority of their musicians were session musicians. Paul Reed, Joel Ross, you know, Julian on the drums, you know. So they, they were, music was down. So they would always perform. Paul, Paul for me, right, is uh, one of my favorite guitarists. Um, not just because he's a, a great guitarist, but as a person, genuine person, down to earth, um, what you see is what you get. And, um, and the thing about it, right, being on stage was great with Paul as well. I, I got, you know, we, we could communicate, he could communicate with his smile. He had his cheeky smile, you know, if he did something well, he'd turn around and give his approval with his cheeky smile and stuff like that. And his ability to, being a keyboard player, his, 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 his music intelligence was very, very good as well. Genius of a guy, we used to ring each other he used to say, I'm playing for the best. Yeah, like who? At the time, we were, we were playing for Jackie Graham. Yeah, we got the best. I'm still playing for the best. Black singer. And then it was, no, Paul, it's me. I got Ruby Turner, man. I got Ruby Turner. He goes, no, 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 Carl. It's me, me. I got Beverly Knight, Beverly Knight, Beverly Knight. Oh, no, no, no. Then I said, no, no, Paul, I got Misha. And, and we, would, we would just like that all the time. We would just be challenging one another and who we play for. And that's how we live, man. Ephraim came from uh, a singing family. His dad used to play guitar. Yeah. Uh, Jabez Lewis used to play guitar. He used to sing with his um, siblings in our church in Wolverhampton. I don't, they went to um, the Wolverhampton branch of, of our church, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? They were like a prodigy. Um, their eldest brother, Derek Lewis, 
there was about there was five brothers. So they were like the Jackson Five, you know what I'm saying? But they were loose. They were a very talented family. All of them could sing. You know, if there was a song singing, he'd get in there and he'd be doing Somehow. the lead. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> and you could tell that that E frame would would make it. And he did make it. Tragically, um, at a celebration party or what have you, he fell to his death through one reason or another how that happened. And I was at the, I went to see my mum. Um, as, as just me and her in the house, um, she had a phone call and went upstairs. And I remember I was watching MTV at the time, um, and a UB40 song came, man. Um, the one about um, I can't help falling in. No, the one on the train. I've got the bottle, bring me a cup, pass the. And E Frame is in the video. E Frame. Because he did BBs on the album, because of the connection with Mick Cater and David Arpat managing him, he was on the video the one on the train. And I remember my mum, I heard my mum kind of, what? So I kind of turned it down and kind of just went out and I listen. She said, what are you saying to me? And Lewis, Ephraim is dead. And, and, and then I kind of ran upstairs and said, what? And I says, and I says no, I've just seen him on the TV. I'll never ever forget it, you know. I'll never forget, I've just seen him, he was on the video. I just watched him. So that was, that was tragic, man. He'd made a wrong choice. But, and do you remember that Friday when he came to church to tell us? That, but he'd already signed it. Yeah. He'd already signed the deal. And he, he, when he came to tell us, it was almost like, I'm not sure this is for yeah, me. Yeah. But Even though he jumped from was, house to house, literally, yeah. just to try and avoid, but he knew that once he'd signed, that was it, mm. you know? Um, but he's a lost legacy because he was just a phenomenal Ahead of his singer. time. He was. He was ahead of his time. Yeah.